Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking the time to connect today. Um, as you can tell by our screen, today's presentation is going to be on our heart failure clinic, then and now, um, pre and post COVID-19. We have the absolutely phenomenal Tanette Cooley, who's going to be giving our presentation today. Um, like I said earlier, if you guys have any questions throughout, please just type them in the chat and we'll address them at the end of our lecture. And with that, if Tonetta would like to take the floor. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Patrick, so much. Um, we are going to talk a little bit today about the um, Heart Failure Clinic and what's been going on pre-COVID and post-COVID. And um, if Dr. Balfour and um, Dr. Vado, I'm not sure if he's on or not, but please feel free to interject at any time. And we'll be more than happy to answer your questions if you have any after um, this meeting. So as we all know, um, patients with heart disease, especially heart failure patients, have an increased risk for contracting COVID-19. These patients have multiple healthcare um, contacts between their families at home, their physician visits, lab draws, and pharmacy pickup. Also, a large number of our patients are seen by home health, palliative care, and or hospice. So our goal has to been has to has been to keep the heart failure patients out of the emergency room by seeing them in the office. So we've made some changes to our processes in the heart failure clinic, and today we're going to discuss the heart failure clinic pre-COVID-19 and post-COVID-19. So our objectives of today um, is to discuss our members of the heart failure uh, team, pre-COVID-19, our referral processes, heart failure visits, our goal-directed medical therapy, outpatient infusion center, the diagnostic, diagnostic testing that we typically order, social services, and post-COVID-19. So a lot has changed since um, pre-COVID-19, but uh, we try to we have tried to keep it the same for our patients, and um, that's what we're going to share with you on today. Our team consists of uh, Dr. Vado and Dr. Balfour has recently joined our team um, in the heart failure clinic, and then Alicia Bush is our heart failure charge nurse. And we recently had Kathy Livingood, one of the medical assistants, and Shelly Payne has been helping us a lot with our um, heart failure concierge process that we're going to talk about later. Fran Carroll has done so much work for us, and we sh definitely thank, uh, thank everyone who has helped us in the process. Will Robeson and some of the other pharmacists have been helping us in the um, heart failure clinic, as well as our new uh, part-time dietitian that we have, uh, Taylor Brantley. And Taylor has been phenomenal. She sees our patients for us. And if you ever need um, any assistance with your patients, please let us know and we'll get that information to Taylor so she can um, contact these patients. So with our referral, referrals, we um, have acute care referrals and then we have patients that of course come to us from um, outside um, from another physician office. But our acute care referral patients with a heart failure diagnosis who are typically seen by a cardiologist doing their acute care stay uh, and this could be interventional, it can be EP, or um, non-interventional cardiologists. These, these patients are referred um, to the heart failure clinic, typically one week post-hospital discharge. And so far, we've been doing really well with seeing these patients, and we want to try to keep that going. Prior to discharge, the patients receive heart failure education by the Four West um, Cardiovascular Educators. And every attempt was, is being made by the heart failure charge nurse, which is Alicia, to see these patients prior to discharge. Now, please keep in mind, this was prior to COVID-19. And right now, you know, of course, Alicia cannot go over to the hospital to see these patients. So, 
we still call patients 24 to 48 hours post-hospital discharge. Once we get a PAQ to um, see these patients, to ensure that the patient has all of their medication, that they've um, completed any required lab work, um, to confirm their upcoming appointments, and all of these calls are documented in the patient's medical records. So if there's any questions about whether or not these patients have been followed up by the heart failure clinic, the documentation should be in the medical record. If you don't see it, please don't hesitate um, to reach out to us at the heart failure clinic. Outpatient referrals, these patients are seen by their cardiologist referred to the heart failure clinic as requested by the physician and remember this is not just non-interventional but this is also ep and um interventional as well patients referred from an outside specialty must first establish care with the primary cardiologist they cannot come directly from their primary care physician or urgent care or the emergency room with if they have not been seen by a cardiologist. Established patients are checked in. Um, we do the typical check-in process by the MA and they're seen by the nurse practitioner. Their plan is reviewed with the patient. We, we review their plan and pre-COVID, they were seen again by the heart failure nurse for educational, um, heart failure education, just to build on their previous learning from post-discharge to where they are right now. Problem visits, we were typically trying to see two to three pop problem slots per day. Um, these were allotted for those patients who were having difficulties or seen in the ER the night before uh, or the day before, and these patients are worked into the, the clinic trot we have done some the same day. However, um, since COVID-19, then we are seeing more patients. We try to see more patients as the need arise. Go directed medical therapy. So the medications, we're gonna talk about the commonly used medications in the heart failure clinic. And please remember that every patient is different. Every patient cannot tolerate the same dosage of medications. Some patients, we only have a handful of uh, patients who are on maximum dose of goal-directed medical therapy, um, and they are tolerating them very well. But most patients cannot tolerate high dosage of um, medications for whatever reason, whether that be they start experiencing hypotension, dizziness, lightheadedness, chest pain, whatever the case may be. So we have to adjust our medications according to the patient's needs. Beta blockers are one of the main medications that we use. And these are three of the heart failure approved um, medications for um, I'm sorry, excuse me. These are three of the approved beta blockers um, for heart failure patients. Please note the high dosage of the medications listed. Please remember that not all patients, like I said, can tolerate the dosage of the medication. Carvedilol, we're used to seeing 25 milligrams BID, but there is a weight limit on this, and patients who are, I believe, is greater than 65 kilograms or 80 kilograms, Dr. Balfour, to here. They should go up to at least 50 milligrams of carvedilol per day. I mean, not per day, twice a day. ACE inhibitors. So this is where I wanted to talk to you guys about, I don't know if you all have been paying attention to um, everything that's been going on with COVID-19 and there's been a big talk about ACE inhibitors and ARBs used in patients um, or found in patients with the COVID-19. So the nurses that are on, board, on, on the call today, if you can remember our Renja angiotensin aldosterone system or the RAS, just really, really quickly, I just want to kind of give you a brief 
um, synopsis of all of this and how this ties into uh, COVID-19 and our patients being at risk. So we know that angiotensin is a protein that renin um, turns into angiotensin 1, which is produced in the liver. Angiotensin 1 converts into angiotensin 2 by ACE or the angiotensin converted enzymes into the lungs. So angiotensin 2 is a vasoconstrictive hormone that increases systemic blood pressure, renal perfusion, GFR, and causes a release of aldosterone and ADH. It is thought that the COVID-19 virus may be affecting this system. There are many questions surrounding this. However, the thought is that COVID-19 is preventing the binding of ACE1 to ACE2. There's no clinical data to support this adverse, um, any adverse or beneficial effects of RAS the Ringer angiotensin system to COVID-19. And it is recommended that patients on an ACE inhibitor or ARB should not stop their medical treatment. These are the ARBs that have been um, approved for heart failure patients, candesartan, valsartan, and losartan. And the diuretics that we typically use are torsamide, ferrosamide, and the bumetanide. Other heart failure medications that we use is the Secubitril Valsartan or the Entresto, the Spironolactone, Inspira, Metalazone, Digoxin, Colinor, Mirinone, and Dibutamine. Digoxin is not um, one of the top pick drugs, but there are a lot of patients that are still on this medication. Spironolactone and Inspira are used um, typically in the out, started typically in the outpatient setting. Now those two medications can cause um, potential side effects in the male patients with gynecomastia. Um, so the, please be, remember to be on the lookout for that if they call in saying that they're having some uh, adverse reactions. The outpatient infusion center, um, the infusion center um, has been available for the heart failure clinic during pre and post COVID-19. And typically their hours are 8 to 3 p.m. Typically, um, I think we've kind of pushed it um, a little bit later. They're not too happy with that, but they do help us out a lot and they've been great. Medications available in the outpatient infusion center include IV bumetanide and laces. We have ordered blood um, to be administered in the outpatient infusion center and um, it's gone quite well. The infusion center also draws any requests of lab work for the patients um, while they're down there. And um, they will call us and let us know if, you know, how the patient is doing and if we would like to come and see the patient prior to them leaving. Diagnostic testing, this is just a brief, brief list of the tests that we order. Typically patients, um, if there are new heart failure patients coming in and they have not had a th their thyroid checked or their hemoglobin A1C checked in quite some time or they haven't had an H and H, we go ahead and check these because diabetes is commonly seen in patients with heart disease. So is anemia. Um, and we try to make sure that these things have been checked. We don't typically follow them, but if they come back and they're abnormal, we will refer them out to their to the appropriate physician for them to be seen. Chest x-rays, echoes, cardiac MRIs, we're ordering more of those pre-COVID nuclear stress tests and EKGs and heart catheterizations. Referrals, the heart failure clinic has referred plenty of patients to home health, um, palliative care, and hospice. Hospice, um, palliative care has a nurse practitioner that will go out and see the um, our patients in between their visits with us. So that's been working really well and we try to stay in communication with her. Um, she calls us if anything happens there and we call her if we change anything here. And so that's been going really well. 
We also refer to the valve cleaning. We don't typically refer to surgery straight off. We go through the valve clinic. So the valve clinic has been really helpful to us because uh, Dr. Jaluka, Dr. Carter see the patients and then they get um, CTS involved. Interventional cardiology, same thing. Um, they have seen a lot of our patients. They do right heart catheterizations for us. Um, to um, get pressures on our, pay, our heart failure patients and um, a lot of outpatient PCIs. Sorry, went too fast. EP, EP has sent us a lot of patients and we um, work closely with them, those patients, a lot of our heart failure patients, of course we know have devices and we do a lot of device checks. We have to send our patients up to um, the fourth floor to get device checks if they need it and nephrology, pulmonary, cardiac rehab, and we have sent patients to, uh, from my office, believe it or not, to Lakeview. Fran works closely with us with medications and transportation, as you all know, as well as the Faith Health Network and Catholic Charities. Recently, we had, we were awarded a grant from the Helping Hands for $5,000. And with that $5,000, we purchased blood pressure cuffs and scales for our heart failure patients. And we give these, um, this equipment to the patients who cannot afford it. And um, it's been very beneficial. We keep track of what's incoming and what's outgoing. Faith Health Network gave us actually, how many, Alicia? 10 um, scales that we have, they donated those to us that we have actually given out to our patients. And these are very nice digital scales. They go up to 450 pounds. And I think the other digital scales we have go up to 400 pounds. Direct admissions. We send a lot of patients from our office directly and admit them to cardiologist service. There's a process that we use. I notify the cardiologist, whoever is on consult for the day, discuss the patient um, that's here in the office. When a, Once approval is given, then Alicia will call the uh, transfer center and get the patient a bed. I typically try to complete all of the orders and the general admit note for the physician. So that will be already done once the patient gets there. And this has so far worked really well. If the patient is going to another acute care service, such as to the emergency room, we will call over to the ER, ask for the charge nurse, give them report. Therefore, our patients don't have to sit in the waiting room for long periods of time. By the time Alicia rolls them down to the emergency room, they're there to uh, get them, triage them, and take them right back. Pre-COVID, we were having meetings. We're not having any meetings anymore. One of the meetings that we were involved in was the 30-day hospital readmission meeting. This was held over um, at the hospital because our heart failure readmission rates were extremely high. Um, and prior to COVID-19, um, I want to say since the beginning of the year, we have not uh, had another one of those meetings because our numbers went down significantly on hospital readmission. So we were doing a really good job with that. So what's changed since post, uh, since COVID-19? Not a lot, but some. But one of the things we definitely want you to do is to keep calm and know that we are open for business, that we are seeing patients in the heart failure clinic. Since COVID-19, we're all aware that there has been delays in presentation and treatment of our heart failure patients, resulting in some hospital readmission. So those readmission rates are going back up. Um, with our heart failure patients being the sickest, it's important to manage them independently for the best care. You'll see more patients coming into the heart failure clinic, um, but they will be managed through our new heart failure concierge service. So our concierge service, we have, the patients have been mailed letters, and um, we also notify them as they um, call in. The patients are asked to park in the oncology parking lot. They call the heart failure cell phone upon arrival, and 
they stay in their car until a member of the heart failure team come down and escort them up to the um, directly to the room. So they bypass, um, they don't bypass being checked in for COVID-19 downstairs, but they do bypass sitting in the waiting room and um, going through check-in. So we do have, we do work with the um, check-in team on getting those patients in. A lot of these patients you already know, or majority of them, their copay has been um, waived. I'm sorry. Their copay has been waived during this COVID-19. So one member, typically one of our medical records members, um, Kathy, not medical records, I'm sorry, MAs, Kathy or Shelly will go down and escort that patient up to the room. They stay with the same person, the same team member from check-in until check-out. And we escort them back down stairs out of the clinic to decrease their exposure. So the only person that the patient is exposed to is the MA and myself. Alicia Bush is carrying the heart failure cell phone. We do have a designated cell phone to the heart failure clinic. Um, should you speak to a patient that needs further evaluation, the team is here to do so. Please call Alicia on the cell phone after making contact and the patient can be directly, uh, or you can directly transfer the patient to um, the heart failure team on Alicia's phone. All appointments need to be scheduled all appointments to be scheduled need to be reviewed by the heart failure team prior to scheduling. So uh, here is our cell phone number. This is a direct number to the heart failure team. It is answered Monday through Friday from eight to five. And in their letter, the patient also knows that any after hours, uh, holidays, weekends, they use the regular cardiology phone number because we still have a physician or cardiologist that's on call during this time. So some of the heart failure patients, if you will look at, if you are in a patient's chart and you look at the top header, uh, right-hand header, you'll see HF slash HOT. The HOT stands for Heart Optimization Team. Um, that will just identify these patients so that the emergency room and when they are in the hospital that these patients are heart failure patients. So you will see that at the top right hand um, header of the patient's chart. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Any questions at all? Dr. Balfour, do you want to add anything? Dr. Vidal, I'm not sure if he's on. Hello. Uh, no, tonight I think that was a good overview. I don't have anything additional to add. Thank you. Patrick? On behalf of everyone tonight, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, I know our COVID or our um, heart failure patients take a lot of special maintenance and care. And I think a lot of us were concerned when this all this was going on about how that care would be given. And I personally, I can say thank you. Um, just feel a lot more reassured. All the awesome people on your team, Dr. Balfour, Vadeau, Alicia, yourself, Fran, Shelly, all of them that are doing everything that you mentioned, Kathy. Uh, just wanted to say thank you on behalf of everyone. Um, if everyone has any questions, if anyone has any questions, I think uh, if, as long as we don't talk over each other, feel free to unmute your mic and ask a question or type it in the chat. But, if not, thank you so much, Nana. That was excellent. Thank you, Patrick. All righty. A lot of great compliments in the chat, but no questions. I think that will do it. Unless anyone, like I said, has any questions, we'll go ahead and end it here. Thanks again, Tornetta, and have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thank you.